Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the Cool Epic Awesome Podcast. I'm Matt. I'm Joe. Welcome back, guys. Yeah, and today we're going to be talking about three films, uh, Pearl, Don't Worry Darling, and Coraline, which Joe recommended last week. And then there's a few trailers and things we could discuss, so I guess we could just get started with... Uh... You want to start with Pearl, right? Yeah, we'll start with Pearl. I... I'm pretty sure you liked it a lot more than I did, so yeah. you can go ahead and start on your thoughts. I really enjoyed it. I felt like the whole like scenery of it, like it almost felt like it took place in a, a um, what's the name of the movie? Like Wizard of Oz esque like style, and Mia yeah. Goth was like phenomenal in it. Yeah, and um. I actually read something that the director, uh, Ty West or T West, I'm not sure how to mm-hmm. pronounce it, but he told uh, when he was discussing like the story with Mia Goth, he told her to watch um, The Wizard of Oz to sort of like inspire her character and the way she acted based off that type of vibe. Yeah, that's actually so, really cool. I didn't know. That. Yeah, and also yeah, just in case I f- we always forget to do this, but if anyone didn't watch it, like a quick synopsis is like. So this the movie X came out this year and it's about like these people that go to this farm and there's this old lady there and she's like murderous for whatever reason. So this movie Pearl is basically a prequel that explains how that lady became who she was and like how she became yeah. a murderer, I guess. And it takes place in 1918. It said, right? Yeah, 1918. And it's actually during the the Spanish flu, I believe. Yeah, it was the Spanish flu. Yeah, which and is kind of interesting to see. You can like, see uh, they try to draw a lot of parallels to COVID. Mm-hmm. Like she's wearing a mask and part of it. A lot of people like mentioned the pandemic, and there's this one scene that stuck out a little bit. That was, I forget what her friend's name is. Um, oh, her like her sister-in-law. Yeah, what's her name again? The blonde girl. I have no idea. Yeah, honestly, it, it doesn't even matter. But um, she says to her, like, oh, all this isolation probably makes you go insane, right? And and then Pearl's like, yep, yeah, you're, like, you're right. Because first of all, she is yeah. going insane. But also, it's kind of, like, similar to what was going on during the, the quarantine here. Where mm-hmm. people, yeah, people just stuck inside. Yeah, and it's... I feel like it did a good job of, like, reflecting those ideas in a time period so separated from where we are now. Oh yeah, I agree. And, and I like watch. One thing that I also liked about the movie was watching um, Pearl's kind of like descent into madness. Like, I mean, she's obviously you can tell something's off from the beginning, but she just it just gets keeps getting like crazier and crazier. And especially her her interaction with the um, I forgot his name too, but the guy that works at the movie theater. Yeah, like that whole sequence I thought was phenomenal. That was my favorite part of the film. Wait, which part? That when she Where, kills him, yeah, yeah, like that five, like when she starts screaming and like, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of great scenes, yeah. honestly. Um, but yeah, about it being like in 1918, it feels like a movie out of that time period, like yeah. the way that it's filmed and like the sound design, the music, the way that they edited the film. Text. It like f- feels like an old movie, and yeah. it has like such a unique style that you don't tend to see nowadays in horror. Um, and I think it just goes to show like the talent that T West has in terms yeah. of directing. I like. I mean, I wasn't the. I liked Pearl. I mean, I liked um X. Like, it was, I I didn't think I like it as much as everyone else, but I really really enjoyed Pearl. Like, I find Pearl as a character way more interesting than uh, what's the girl's name in X? Maxine. Maxine. Yeah, I I personally preferred X. But they're they're two different movies. They're, like, yeah, they're Pearl, both. I mean, they're both good. They're Pearl really is more good. of a character study, and yeah. X is more of like a gen, like a slasher, with like you have I this agree. big group of people and they get taken out one by one. And I mean, so, I'm, now I'm re- I'm really interested to see how Maxine is going to be because I'm sure that's just going to be focused solely on her. Yeah, yeah. And so for for those of you who don't know, I think we posted about it, but they announced like a third film in this franchise which is going to follow maxine who is also played by mia goth and it's the sole survivor of x so it's going to follow her in the 80s in um, la right 
in LA, yeah, trying to like, I guess, get ahead in Hollywood, and because that was her like dream in yeah. X. But I'm sure she's gonna like become murderous. Yeah, but and yeah, they, well, I mean, they even they paralleled it a little bit in X because remember her interaction with Pearl at the end. She says like, doesn't she say like, you're you're just like me? You're like you're gonna you're gonna turn out like me. Yeah, and like when you watch X, you don't really understand, I guess. But yeah. seeing Pearl and like what she went through, you kind of understand it more. And I feel like watching Pearl makes X that much better. Because yeah, I you, agree. It you gives like, more context to the film. Yeah, because uh, like a complaint that people had, I guess, was like, why would this lady just murder people for no reason? Like, it doesn't really make sense. But yeah. then when you sort of like dive into her backstory, it makes more sense. It's about why that's the way she is. Yeah. Um, talking about Mia Goth, though, I this was honestly like my favorite performance of the year from any actor. It was. Yeah. I think like she genuinely should get an Oscar nomination. I agree, but I don't. Yeah, I don't think she will. will. No, yeah. Man. But that one, like this, one, I'll talk about my favorite scene really quick. It's that like she gives like a six minute or seven minute do- monologue with no cuts, just her talking to the okay, camera yeah. for like six or seven minutes straight, and just being so like unsettling with it, like she's quivering like, and twisted like, and crying there's like snot coming out of her nose and stuff and she's talking about how like she lost a baby with uh howard and like she's sort of explaining the backstory and like like how she hates him for going to the war war, and like how miserable she is and yeah i just think like her delivery on that was unreal yeah um I just I had another thought. Hold on. Wow. Oh, I lost. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, just that along with some other things, you kind of like feel for her, even though you could tell like right from the jump, you know she's insane. Like within the first five yeah. minutes, she murders a goose with a pitchfork and feeds, and feeds it. To it. An but like especially with her mother too, and how degrading she is, and. Like how she's treated, she has to take yeah. care of her father, who's who like can't like even Like they make function. you sympathize with her a little bit. Like yeah, you, like it, you have some form of sympathy. And obviously she's a psychopath, but like yeah, the movie so, does a good job of like making you kind of feel bad for her in a way. Yeah, I found similarities to like Joker, kind of, mm-hmm. where it's like you know this person is is like horrible for what they're doing, but yet you still feel for them and you kind of find yourself rooting for them. Yeah. Um, I was honestly like when there's a scene specifically when uh, she so during the plot of what part of the movie is that they're they're like looking for girls that are going to dance at what is it like a holiday special or something? Yeah, like I don't know. I think it, I, I think it's something for like they're going around to the troops to like rally. Yeah, like, yeah, like get good spirits or something by like dancing for them or whatever. So because um, what war was happening? 1918. World war one. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um she tries out at the church and it's like it's like of course it's like her version of it. It's like this big like musical spectacle, with, like all these like prop sets and stuff. And then like she ends up not getting the part. You see like her like reality just like break in front of her. And and then what's one one scene that's cool is like all the judges at the table that are like uh, you know, like watching her, they're like it's them, and then, like, she turns away, and it's, like, her her mom. What is it? Her mom, her dad, that, I think, the guy, and then someone else. Like, all the people that she, like, ended up murdering in the movie. Yeah, and it's her mom with the scarred up face, because yeah. she had just come from, like, pushing her into a fire, and she burnt her face up. And it's in the crowd, her mom is saying, like, or not in the yeah. crowd, but on the judge table, she's saying, yeah. oh, you'll, I told you, you'll never make it, you'll... You'll never be good enough, which is like what she told her earlier in the movie when yeah. when Pearl asked if she could go to this dance audition. Yeah, yeah. That seemed, I, I that like I, like I enjoyed all the kills too. I thought like everything was very unique, and like I, I like the burning thing and the pitchfork. Like everything was. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't as many kills as X. 
Oh, and no. I felt like the kills were lacking a bit. Um, really? But still I, was I don't know. I thought I, I, I enjoyed Because how many kills are there, really? It's, it's her dad. Her dad. Her mom. Um, and the dude. And, 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 like, uh, and like that girl. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel Which, like it's like more personal because she like Pearl has actual relationships with these people. It's not just like rant like in X. It's like a you know these random people just show up. She starts marking them. Yeah, but in that's, Pearl, like, that's a good she, point. She has established relationships with these people, so I feel like the kills mean a lot more. Yeah, like they're more emotionally driven. Yeah, and I although it is it's not really a slasher, but there is like murder in it. Yeah, that's. I didn't find it scary for that. No, I didn't. I didn't think it was scary at all. I kind of found it a little bit scary in like how unsettling she is as a character and how like deranged she is. Yeah, and I I noticed also the entire film like takes place in the day, but for the most part, and it's still scary. I think yeah. the most unsettling scene was like after she gives the monologue, and she tells um her friend like that she killed people. And her friend's like leaving the house, and you just see her, see Pearl like come out of the house, pick up the axe, and like slowly start like walking towards yeah. her. And she's like trying to run away, screaming for help, and there's like no one there. No one there. It actually it reminded me of um the I I haven't watched it in a while, but isn't there a scene like that in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre where the girl's yeah. trying to run from him, and like there's just nowhere to go? Yeah, that's at the end of the film, and. That's like way more intense, but it's the same kind of idea. Yeah. In Texas Chainsaw Massacre, she's being chased for like five minutes straight of like screen time, maybe more, and like is screaming the entire time. But yeah, it's the same idea. Yeah. So, what do you think of the ending? So, um, the way it ends is she takes her like the corpses of her mom and dad and sets them up at the table, and. It's like the pig on the table that was yeah. gifted to them, which is now like rotting. With like maggots eat it in it. Yeah. And then Howard, who's her husband, comes back from war and kind of like sees it. And then it pans to her and she's just smiling and staring at the camera for like <laughs> what's what seemed like what, like two or three yeah. minutes straight. What did you think of that? I actually, I mean, I, 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 I like. I thought it was not cool, like especially the end credits, like where it's just on her face and it's just kind of like very unsettling. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it also the ending kind of left the door open for, for more. Yeah, I was gonna say for other stories. Like I, I'm like I would be so down for them to do like more stories with Pearl, because I mean even Howard too, like because he kills people in the in the the um in yeah. X. So I'm sure like he's. Obviously, he's psychotic, too. Like, it would be interesting to see, like, how a story with them, two would be. Yeah, and from the beginning of Pearl... I mean, I'm sorry, the end of Pearl to the beginning of X, like, where we are with these characters, there's so much left to fill in. Yeah. Like, we don't even know how Howard reacts when he comes home and sees that, but obviously, he's there in X, so... Yeah. Like, who knows what could have happened. They might, There could have been, like, cover-ups, or, like, they had to murder more people. And I think that was on purpose because they kind of see how how people popular, how audiences would be with it. Yeah, like this franchise is becoming, so they want to leave the door open to sequels. Yeah, um, I agree. I don't know if you saw, but apparently Martin Scorsese saw this. Yeah, and he said he really he really liked it, right? Yeah, and he commented on it, which is like pretty unheard of. Yeah, especially for like, a horror film. I was actually having a conversation about this with a friend. I know it's a little off topic, but. Like, it's very hard to find, like, horror movies that are, like, good movies. Like, I, I know, like, X is more like a slasher, but still kind of the horror genre. Like, I feel like it's very hard to find, like, good, like, actually good movies in the horror genre. As opposed to other genres where I feel like there's a lot more, be like, better quality movies. Wait, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, no, I said, yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, A lot of times people are like, oh um what's your what are like some good horror movies what are your favorite horror movies and i have a couple and then i'll like look at my letterbox and there's only like 10 movies that i have like rated above a four maybe uh -huh. out of like out of like 900 movies i've seen for horror yeah. well not 900 horror but like no, in general. Yeah. 
And a lot of times I'm like, I think like, oh, I love horror. I love horror. But like usually it caps out at around like a seven out of 10 for a good horror movie. I feel like all the good, like actually scary, like when uh, the best horror films I've seen that I've rated the, the, the highest is like really aren't like scary. Like they're more just like films that are like horror, like Evil Dead 2. Like I love because like, I love that type of film. But like it's not really scary. It's just like. I, well, I mean, for me, it's very, like, stylistic. I personally like it, but... Like, do you find mo- that mo- type of movie scary? Something like Evil Dead 2? Yeah. Um, I personally don't, but if you think about, like, the body horror aspects of it and, like, how yeah. gruesome it is, the average, like, moviegoer who's not, a, like, sort of accustomed to that stuff yet... It's gonna be, like, sh- yeah, it's gonna true. be, like, grossed out, and mm-hmm. it's there's, like, a lot of shock value there. But since we're, like, exposed to that already, it's kind of, like, not as scary, and it almost becomes comical in a way. Yeah, Um, that's fair. But, yeah, I mean, this year has been great for horror, though, in general. We've we've gotten X, Pearl, Crimes of the Future, Scream, Black Phone. We're getting getting, um, Halloween Ends. Barbarian also, which Barbarian, I, know, I haven't you said seen. you're gonna go see. I might see it today. Yeah, um, Smile, which looks really cool, comes out next week. Yeah, it looks so dumb, and then apparently it's like decent. It got good reviews. So no, I I, I thought it, like the concept of it was kind of cool. It's like, um, what was it? It's like there's like a some type of like spirit or like demon or something like possessing these people, and it's like it smiles. I don't know the whole smile. Seems like it's really unsettling every time I see it. So I don't know. That kind of intrigues me. Yeah, and it's it's a pretty like smaller cast. You could tell it's like a low budget. Yeah, they don't have any like big names. The guy who plays A Train is in it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. If you like look at all like their Twitter and stuff, and the the whole comment section is like flooded with uh people talking about A Train because he's in it. Um, That's actually funny. But yeah, no, we're we're getting off topic. Now. Yeah, yeah. But back to Pearl. I I was like looking into it a little bit after, um, and it was it was like secretly filmed simultaneously with X. And that's actually crazy that that never like leaked or anything like that. Like such no. a big movie. Well, the thing is, X is not really a big movie if you think about it. Like, yeah, to I the guess general public. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like it they. Before they even started filming X, they already greenlit Pearl to be made. So, like, A24 trusted Ty West and Mia Goth to, like, make two films with, basically... I was looking at Ty West's other stuff. He doesn't really have much, like, great... Yeah, he has, like, VH, VHS, right? But that's, like, a bunch of different directors. Yeah, like, last night I actually watched um this movie called ABCs of Death with my friends. Oh, he directed. Yeah, I was looking at. He that. directed like an episode, not an episode, but it's basically twenty six short films. Each one is has a death that relates to a letter. So he directed one of them, and what, what, it was honestly one? like not impressive at all. It was M. Hmm. It was like M for miscarriage or something, and it just like wasn't like if I saw that and that was one of the only things he made, I don't, I wouldn't like trust him. To uh, yeah, to helm like two, like big. Uh, films going to theaters, but was he? Did he like come up with the idea of X, or they like it was pitched to him? And he, I'm pretty sure he pitched it to them. That's usually how it works. Is like directors get these ideas and they go to studios and they sort of they sort of like shop around their ideas, like yeah, and then whatever studio offers the most money or whatever it may be, they take on the film and um give like their resources for it they'll distribute it all that which it's not always like that like when it comes to like the bigger blockbusters like if you have like fast and the furious like yeah if, like, like they'll go like, they'll go to directors yeah they go to directors but yeah i mean it, it happens in different ways yeah also mia goth um got it's her producer. first yeah she right. was a screenwriter and a producer and it was like her first credits of those which is cool hey, you know? Yeah, he was a producer on X, I'm pretty sure, too. Oh, really? Which, yeah, he also starred in it. But, yeah, I mean, 
like it's a it's a great movie. I don't know yeah. what else really to say. Uh, I guess we could. Oh, well, my favorite character. It's like obvious. It's yeah. Mia Goth as Pearl. There's not really anyone that stands yeah. out too no much. No disrespect to the other characters, but yeah, Pearl just kind of blows everybody else out of the water. I did kind of like her friend. Maxine. Though. No, what is it? Maxine? I keep forgetting no. her name. Why is it Maxine? I just saw it before. It's like, wait, hold on. Mitzi. Oh, what Mitzi? That was it. Yeah, was Mitzi. She, she was good. Um. And like the mother was good too. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's obviously like Mia Goth. She it's her movie, you know? Yeah. And she carries most of it on her shoulders. Um So yeah, I guess for ratings, I give it a four star, so eight out of ten. And it's like slightly below X for me. But it's basically on the same level for different reasons. Also. Yeah. And uh, I gave it a four and a half. Uh, I just, I don't know, I really, really enjoyed it. All right. Well, you want to do still in theaters. So. I, I mean, I already said it, but it was the monologue leading into yeah. her murdering Mitzi. Like, that whole sequence was insane. It was, like, yeah. some of the best acting I've seen this year and in general. And then for me, it's probably the, like I mean I said it before, but when that whole the sequence where she kills the uh, the guy from the um, movie theater, yeah, yeah. But even cool. when like this when he comes to the house, like from there on, was really good. Yeah, and you could tell he was like getting weirded out. Yeah, like immediately. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess we can move on to. The other movie, which we weren't going to talk about it originally, but yeah. we both were able to see we ended it. Up to, we're able to see it, yeah. So you want to introduce it? Yes, yeah, so we saw "Don't Worry, Darling," directed by uh, Olivia Wilde, and I mean the reviews for it were pretty bad. I thought it was okay. I know Matt, you liked it more than I did. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, I, and I'm a little confused I, by the reviews. Yeah, it's definitely getting blown out of proportion. Like it's 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 not like what it get like thirty eight percent or something like that. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes has a thirty eight. Yeah, like it's definitely not that bad. It's not really bad. I just I thought it was okay. Like it's not a horrible movie. Yeah. So just a little synopsis. It's it follows this couple, um, Florence Pugh who plays Alice and Harry Styles plays Jack, and it's supposed to be set in the fifties. They live in sort of like this secluded town called, what was it called? The something project. Name. What was the project called? The future project? No, no. I'm pretty they sure there's it. no, there's no name. Like, cause I was, I was trying to figure it out too after, like, I don't think they actually called, there wasn't like a name for the town. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, regardless, they live in this town and it's sort of like a utopia. The woman the wives kind of just like don't work they take care of the house take care of the kids and all the husbands like work at the same place and they tell they're not allowed to talk about what they do with their wives and um yeah it's just the whole thing is kind of weird like from the yeah. beginning you could tell it's like a little bit too Something's good to be off. true yeah um and like as the movie progresses you start to see Florence Pugh's character, Alice, like, realized that something is wrong. Yeah. Um, I guess the first thing that really stuck out to me was the music. Um, yeah, uh, the music I, and, the, and the, um, well, can, yeah, you go, so I don't mean to cut you off. No, nah, you're fine. The, I was going to say the music and, like, the sound design in general was really good. Yeah. I felt like it knew when to play certain types of music, and it fit well into the story with, like, the record player, so that... There's a reason why, like, there's music playing, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what were you gonna say? Yeah, the the music and like the whole like style of the film was shot in like if it was always like this. I felt there was an eeriness throughout the entire film, like from start to finish. Yeah, everything was like too perfect. Yeah, like I, there's some shots of like her cracking eggs and or or her uh, like slicing toast, and it's like so like perfect. Coffee. 
and yeah. like crisp. And then there's it's kind of paralleled at the end when like shit starts hitting the fan. When she's doing those same things and there's the same shots of her like pouring the coffee and cutting the toast, yeah. it's not as perfect. And like, like there's that one shot of her pouring the coffee for Mad Long like, and, yeah, her, yeah. and her hands like shaking. Um, I really like the visuals also. Like aside from yeah, the actual vibe of everything, especially like the town itself looks like like it's just like it's I don't know the whole you're right like the visual of the town and like that whole like fifties esque. Like, I, I I thought it was really good. Yeah. And when she started having those dreams, there was a lot of, like, circular imagery with, like, the eye and the, the eye dancer's and legs. Dancing, yeah. Even the and, town was a circle. Yeah. And it all, like, comes back. It comes back. I'll, I'll wait till the yeah, end we'll to wait, spoil yeah, it yeah. just in case. But, like, the whole idea of the eyes comes back at the end. Or, like, or, like her weird dreams get explained. Yeah. Um. The town in general reminded me a lot of WandaVision. Yeah. Okay. I don't know I if agree. you, like, picked up on that. Uh, yeah, I agree. I just think that for some reason the whole trope of, like, living in, like, a... a just, like, it could, like, I don't know what you would call it, but the same thing in WandaVision where, like, some, you could, like, Vision knows something's not right. Like, he could tell something's off. Like that. Yeah. I feel like they always tend to do, like, 50s, like, the Golden Age... Okay. Yeah, because a lot of I feel like that time period it's a lot of like white picket fences and like perfect family life. Yeah. Or it has like that sort of connotation with it. Yeah, exactly. So, so when you start doing like eerie stuff in that time period, it's more like jolting, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It also I don't know if you've seen this, but it reminded me of the Truman show a lot. I haven't seen it, but I like I know like like the like what it's about. A great yeah it's it's like a fake yeah reality that reality. Just, that truman lives in whatever um and i was like looking into the i was researching a little bit on like how olivia wilde made the movie and she said she was inspired by inception and the truman show so i guess yeah. like those elements definitely shine through at least for the truman show inception yeah. a little bit i guess um but yeah all, in terms of like the performances I had no issues with any of them. Florence Pugh's amazing, which I'm yeah. sure you can agree on that. Yeah, and Harry Florence was so. Harry was fine. He was he was good. I didn't, I, I didn't think he was that good. I, I mean, felt I, like there was like his accent would change in like different scenes. Like I don't know, he just it felt like he was like uncomfortable the whole movie. Yeah, and like I to mean, have him have such like a subpar performance, like next to Florence Pugh's like phenomenal performance is like such a it's such a shame. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could just agree to disagree on that. I, yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't think it was bad, and I mean, it is kind of a lot on on like his shoulders. To no, be, I'm like, not trying to like disrespect. Like, you know, I know it's hard. Obviously, I'm just. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not. That's not like an excuse, but I'm just like in the context of his situation okay, yeah. with like he hasn't. He's like he's not an actor, you know, yeah. and all of a sudden he's like headlining this this major motion picture. So yeah. it is kind of like a lot. And I think he did fine. I mean, the only I, like his freak out scenes were a little bit excessive, but that like he could work on that, I guess. But for as in terms of like a first time as a lead in a movie, I think he did pretty well. Um, the like, whole cast in general was good. I, I liked um, but this guy Nick Kroll surprised me a lot. I actually really liked his character. Yeah, he was good. Um, Chris Pine was good. Yeah, he was good. Yeah. Olivia Wilde was good. Um, What's his voice? Gemma John? Is that her name? Gemma Chan. Or John, maybe. Yeah. She's in Eternals. Yeah. She was good, too. Yeah. I didn't really understand what they did with her character at the end, which we'll get into in a little bit. But yeah. There's a, um, a lot of stuff that I kind of just don't understand. Yeah. Maybe. I, I think I kind of get, like, the movie. So I maybe could, like, yeah, maybe walk you through a little bit of yeah. it. But... Trying to think who else was good. Also, that dude from WandaVision is in it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that. Um, I forgot his name, but he's like a comedian. He's like the office. Yeah, he's like the... He works in the office with Vision. Yeah, he was good in it. Yeah. Let me try to think of what else I could say before I start getting into spoilers. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, you can't really like talk about a lot of it without spoilers. Yeah. 
I, f- I feel like it felt like an episode of Black Mirror. And yeah, yeah. I think it I might agree. have worked a little better if they took this concept and made like a shorter one hour episode with it. Yeah. Because there were lulls. At times. Yeah, it was two hours and 20 minutes. Like, that's a long yeah. movie, you know? Um, I guess like they could have done this movie in like 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so it felt like. Uh, and also, another thing is like. It's a psychological thriller, and all those scenes where, like, there's weird shit happening, like, she's getting pressed against the glass, or, like, yeah, she sinks into the bathtub, and, like, her, her, like, in the mirror, her head stays there. All of those moments, every single one of them was revealed in the trailers. There oh, wasn't... Yeah, I didn't even realize that. Like, all, like, every single one. Like, the girl slamming her head. just, like, don't explain... Like, and like that scene, like this like, an example, like that scene happened, like with her pressed up against the glass and like, that was just like never addressed again. Like they don't, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess it's I, supposed to be her like in this, like, I don't know. Yeah. I guess we might as well just get into spoilers. Yeah. Um, so it's revealed at the end that this whole world is, is basically like the metaverse. It's VR or like a, an insane level of VR where in the real world, Harry and Florence Pugh are just laying in bed and have like these things on their eyes that transport them into this fake world. But yeah. like none of it's real. In reality, they're just she's a nurse, I think, and he's yeah. like struggling looking for a job. And it's basically revealed that without her knowing, um, Jack transported both of them into the world. In order to like give her a better life, better life, yeah, because she it's like she was wor- like working all the time and stuff. So, I mean, the twist that it was all fake. I, you said it was lazy, I think, right? Yeah, I thought like I was expecting something with, like a little more like deeper. I get the whole thing of like, oh, like society sucks and like this world sucks. Like, let's escape somewhere better. But I feel like they always do that trope. And, like, I was expecting there to be something, like, bigger, like, I don't know. Like, with the way the town was doing, like, that they were doing something shady. I didn't like the whole, like, fake reality thing. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, I, I didn't mind it. The thing is that, the reason why I didn't mind it is because I didn't see it coming at all. Like, it caught me completely off guard when they revealed it. Um, I, had, if they I had an idea, like, in the middle of the film. Like, when she started, like having the the like the kind of flashbacks i was like it's gonna be like she was i knew it was like he he like did something to her and like yeah i thought it was like a a memory wipe or something but i didn't think it was gonna be like a virtual world and i agree i mean i think they could have done something better i kind of would have liked if they revealed like because it the thing that they're this like big project they're working on there is no project like yeah. it's it's not it's fake when they say oh we're going to work they actually leave the the husbands reality. leave the reality and like go work in the real world so they have enough money to like keep this going and then come back the the wives don't even know they're in this reality and they're forced to stay there yeah um which is like fucked up but like it's like a morally gray area i feel yeah, like it's with, like with harry styles character yeah Cause like she like like the whole thing is that like he she was miserable she worked so much but like that's her life it's like it's not like it's like is it really better if she's not it's not her own ability to do it if that kind of makes sense yeah and there's that scene where he's like oh like I gave you all this I gave you this perfect life yeah. and she's like it's not like your life to decide that yeah it's my life which is true like it's very selfish of him to do it yeah but his intentions weren't selfish I feel. Yeah, no. Like, it wasn't so, like he was, like, a horrible person. Like, he was trying to do something to better his girlfriend's life. It's just, like, it's not really his choice to make. Yeah. And there is, like, a couple unanswered plot threads, I feel like. I, I don't understand, yeah. like, what is the plane? Why is the plane there? Also, Why? what is what is the shaking? They don't explain that either. I mean, like the town just randomly shakes and it just like, I thought it was going to be like something to do with what they were like doing, but they literally yeah. just never address it. And that's like a big, I think that's like a decent like plot thing because they even revealed that in the trailer. 
like yeah. what the shaking is, and then like they just never paid it off. Well, I feel like it kind of like it drags for so long, and then once you find out what happens, it just rushes to the end and then quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, aside from that, I don't get why Shelly, who's Gemma Chan's character, why did she kill her husband? I don't know either. But they don't explain, like, oh, so yeah, yeah. I guess she saw it. Like she got. I don't know. It's Maybe revealed that if you die, you yeah, it's revealed that if you die in this metaverse, you die in real life. Yeah. So Florence Pugh ends up killing her husband, husband. who's Harry Styles, and he dies in the real world. And then after that, it's revealed that Olivia Wilde's character like knows she's one of the she's like the only wife that knows that they're in a virtual reality, and she like tells Alice she's like yo like you have to leave because they're gonna come kill you, like you actually have to get yeah. out. So, I I thought that um, her character kind of got flushed out a lot at the end when it's revealed like she says well first of all it's revealed that all the kids there aren't real really, yeah. so it's kind of like like you're not forcing children to stay in there which i guess makes it a little better yeah. but she reveals to alice olivia wilde's character at the end reveals to alice like like that she chose to be in there because she has her kids in there and like yeah. alice is like they're not real and she's like well here they're real like like if when i stay in this world they're real in reality like i I lost them. Like in this world, I didn't lose them. And you could, like, you really like feel for her character. Like, I guess she lost yeah. her children. So she kind of like went, you could tell like everyone who's in there must be some sort of like mentally scarred. Have some trauma. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that scene was pretty powerful. I felt. Yeah. Um, you, you sort of see like different reasons as to why people go in. Yeah, I guess. And then wait, also, like the the dinner table scene, where they're talking, and then Chris, what did Chris Pine say about him sleeping with her or something? No, he didn't. He said, he's like, oh, uh, something about like respecting each other, and he's like, oh, I respect you enough to like, tr oh no, trust. It's about trust. And he's like, I trusted you in my bedroom, but he was referring to when he saw Jack and Alice like oh, oh. in his bedroom, like he trusted to like leave them in there. I okay. guess. I thought he was like alluding to like the fact that they like, that he was like fucking her or something. That's why I was like, what the fuck? And they just, no, no, no. Okay. Um, but yeah, so what you were saying about how, uh, like that's never addressed of like the wall closing in on her and shit like that. I just chalked it up to like since it's a computer simulation, it's just like glitches that start to happen when like your mind wanders too far. Yeah, but but I feel that like was that's just gi that's giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, that was just my interpretation of it. Um, I but yeah, it was, there's definitely I, I a lot unexplained. Like, I took it as like, like side effects of her like, quote unquote like psychosis, whatever. But like, she's not really like she's not like crazy. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, the whole like compute. The more you think about it, the more it falls apart. So it's kind of like leave it as for value. Yeah. yeah, like if they make this computer world, like why would they make it so that if you die in there, you die in real life? Like, there's no benefit to doing that, yeah. unless like in order to make it feel that real, like you, that's the only way. Because if they make it that you can't die, then it's like it doesn't feel real or sure, something. Yeah. Um. Also, how does how do the woman stay alive? Like, well, it's we supposed to be like that, like they're hooked. I mean, it's not like obviously medically accurate, but like they had her hooked up to like the IV. And like, yeah, he was like dripping water in her mouth. Mouth, yeah. But like they need food. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. Like usually, I mean, I'm not gonna go all, like medical on you, but like they. Like I'm assuming they're just alluding to the fact that like she's getting her food through the IV. That's what I took it as. Almost like she's yeah. like a, in a hospital, like in a, like somebody like that's like has a is in a coma, and they just kind of feed them through like they'll have like a, a tube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I it also like I said before, I just don't get 
the plane? Like, why did she see the plane crash? And why did she start, like, questioning things? In order, like, because I guess, I mean, I that that she goes up to where they're doing their work, quote unquote, and then she touches the glass of like where their project is supposed to be happening. And it's revealed later that when she did that, she like got transported into the real world. But like Jack was there in the real world to like bring her back in. But like, why did she start getting her memories back? It's never really explained. Yeah. Like maybe all they had to do is be like, oh, like the way that it was the way that she had those things on her eyes in the real world, like she put like Jack put them on her incorrectly or something. So she started getting her memories back. Yeah. Bit. Like shit like that is just like glossed over and it does start to add up. Yeah, I agree. Like there was just a lot of stuff that I didn't like with the movie and like a lot of plot holes and stuff that they never really address or. Yeah, and also of. like this whole thing happens where, which also another great scene is that Jack, this is like before, you know, that he knows it's a simulation. When Alice is like begging, like, please, please, can we leave? Can we leave this place? And he's like, fine. But he actually sets her up so that like these people come and like take her and then wipe her memory again. Memory again, yeah. Which was like, it was a, it was a good scene. Like Florence Pugh was doing like going crazy when she was getting dragged out of the car. Yeah. Um, but then like whatever this stuff happens, she comes back into the fake world and then she just instantly like gets her old memories back again like i think it was like because he was humming that song it was supposed to be like oh now she remember you know what i mean yeah i mean i guess but if it's that easy to remember like how come no one else i mean i guess the original girl who ended up killing herself it happened to her first but but i think that was because she went she went up to remember she said that she went up to the thing with her son and they took her son away. Yeah, but um, I'm assuming because Alice says like Alice was friends with that girl beforehand. And she alludes to the fact like she was like, oh, she saw something out there. She saw something. I'm assuming that means she saw the plane crash also. Yeah. Um, so why did she just like like because let's say she knows that it's like a fake reality. Her like the yeah. what's her name? The woman Olivia Wilde. No, no, no. Oh, no. that girl from the beginning? Yeah. Whatever, like, I'm just assuming she knows that something's wrong there. I feel like it's, like, Margaret or something. What a, yeah. yeah. Why did Margaret. she just, like, slit her throat? You know, they're, like... There's no escape, so... And no, everyone is, like, gaslighting her. Like, thinks she's crazy. Yeah. And, like, she can't leave. And she knows it's all fake, so she's like, alright, I'm just gonna kill myself. Because it's, like, the only escape. Yeah. But I meant more like, like as a logistic, like why, like if she's going to jump off the building, why did you slit your throat? Like, I don't know. I thought that was stupid. Like I said, it kind of a nickel. Uh, I mean, well, she, she didn't like jump off. She slit her throat and then like fell. But I mean, I guess why was she up there? I don't know. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I guess well, just, I'll talk about my favorite scene. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed like, the final car chase um and like jack's death everything yeah. from from jack's death on when like olivia Wilde comes in and she was great in that scene actually and like she's telling her like yo like alice like you have to go and then like this whole car chase happens and yeah she finally like makes it up but the only thing i didn't like is that she gets up there and there's like all these questions you have and then the movie just ends but yeah it's just, like it really like i don't know it really disappointed me did you have a favorite scene or no? Um, I mean, I thought that was really interesting. She, Wait, I think it cut off. What did you say? The dinner table scene I really liked. Mm-hmm. Like when when she has the interaction, like how she knows that they all met the same way. Yeah, and you could tell like the other girls are starting to like question it like, a little question bit. It, yeah. Yeah, so that was a good one. And Chris Pine was great in that scene too. Yeah. Um, I guess it's we got to talk a little bit about like the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Did you see the latest thing that just came out? What the, that they got into a screaming match on yeah. set? Yeah, but this was what we were talking about last week already. How like 
um, or the last podcast, how like Olivia Wilde would just be like off with Harry Styles like while they're filming scenes, and like apparently Florence Pugh like had to direct stuff herself. And this new report came out said they got into a screaming match on set, and Florence Pugh like said specifically like oh i'm directing this movie more than you or some shit and like so it kind of confirms those like initial claims it's kind of wild like how how much traction this is caught all behind the scenes stuff i know and i mean it, the box office stuff just came out it made 21 million opening weekend which is like okay i'm, I'm sure the budget was pretty high um let me see. Let's look it up. Yeah, just look it up really quick. Um, but honestly, like, if I'm Olivia Wilde, like, this whole situation is just so embarrassing. Yeah. Like, you get this big studio to give you a budget. They get you this great cast. Like, it's made by Warner Brothers. It's not, like, some small studio. Yeah. And it's, like, her first big picture. She gets, oh, the, budget, the budget was $35 million. Oh, All right. Yeah, it'll make its, its money back then. Yeah. So she gets this awesome cast, like all this like advertising, this big stage, and she's just, like running off, like cheating on her husband on set, like like not being professional, like getting into fights with with like her her actors. Yeah. It's just like embarrassing. Like you take this huge opportunity. Like you know how many people in Hollywood would like do anything for an opportunity like that? Yeah. And I Has feel she like... came out and said anything about it? No, not that I know of. There was that whole like leaked audio which we talked about last week where like uh, originally Shia LaBeouf was gonna play, play Jack. Jack. And would you, you just... think it would have you think it would have been better as with him or Harry Styles? I just can't see Shia playing that like pretty boy, like perfect husband. So I don't think it really would have worked with Shia LaBeouf. I mean, that's, I feel like that's kind of the point, because he's not supposed to be the pretty boy, perfect husband. Well, no, he is in the fake world. That's, like, in the real world, no, he's not supposed to be, but in the fake world, he is. That's the whole point. Everything's perfect in there. No, I know. Well, I mean, like, to her, yeah, but you, like, even, like, you realize at the end that he's not perfect. No, even I know, but I'm saying, like, to play that fake character yeah. in the world, like, I can't see him pulling that off. Yeah. Um, He's a good actor, so I'm sure it would have been fine. But yeah, I'm glad they ended up going with Harry. Uh, favorite character, though. Um, I got it. I liked Alice, Florence Pugh yeah. as Alice. Uh, Alice or um, Nick Kroll's uh, character. I forgot the guy's name. Yeah, he was good. He was like comedic, also. Yeah. Um, but yeah. In terms of ratings, I gave uh, it a, I gave it a three, so six out of ten. Like it, I still like with even with all the the plot holes and stuff with it. Like I still did enjoy the film. It wasn't like garbage. Yeah, like, I ended up I ended up giving it a four star. Um, I I don't know. I just really enjoyed it, and the more the most of my issues come with like nitpicks of the reality and and like the way they set up this fake world. But in terms of like production value and like performances and the story overall, like I think it was really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I gave it four stars, eight out of 10. Um, yeah, I guess hmm. you want to move on into uh, some movie news. I'm not sure if there's much to talk about, but there was a couple trailers. Did you, really you want to talk about Quarline first? Or? No, we'll save that for the end. Um, I mean, the biggest thing probably to come out, at least in my opinion, is the Hellraiser trailer released, and mm -hmm. um, it shows a look at all the new Cenobites and the Lament configuration is kind of really different from the original, but it doesn't look bad at all. Like it's an interesting take on it. Yeah, it's it's more fleshed out and like what it actually is because in in the original Hellraiser movies, it's kind of like oh, it's this box and like. The, the characters kind of just like touch it or like rub it a little and then it just opens up. Yeah. This one in this film, it's kind of like an actual puzzle, puzzle box. Yeah. Which is cool. And yeah, I mean, the trailer looks good. The, the whole vibe of it, like it's being serious. 
It's exploring what seems to be like new ideas in the world. In the world, yeah. And Jamie Clayton looks great. Uh, yeah, all, all the Cenobites I thought looked good. I mean, from the, what was it? There was, I think the there chatterer. was four in the trailer. The Chatterer, the new one, the mask. And then there was like one other one they showed at the end. Yeah. She, it was like a, I think it was a girl, maybe. Oh, yeah. I don't, but she I don't had know like, what it was. No mouth. It was like, her bottom they, jaw was. Yeah, usually they have like all white faced, but she had like her face was completely dark. Yeah. Which was cool. Um, yeah, I don't know about Jamie Clayton's voice though yet because I I I thought I love the voice personally. I mean, I guess I'm just so used to um what the fuck's his name? The guy um, who plays Pinhead. Dude, oh I my feel god. Like an idiot for not knowing this. Oh, Doug Bradley. Doug, Doug Bradley. Bradley. His voice is so like iconic. That it's kind of hard to top it, but I, I I know I know like it's supposed it's obviously a different take on it. Like I'm not taking it as like a Doug Bradley impersonation. I think on its own, like I really liked it. Yeah, I can appreciate how they're doing something different with it. Um, yeah, and as we were saying with like great horror that's coming out, it's another one this year, Hellraiser. Hellraiser, yeah. And we'll we'll actually be talking about it on the next episode. So yeah, I think so. That's crazy. I didn't realize how close it was. Yeah, let me check the calendar real quick. Yeah, because it comes out October 7th. Yeah. I'm kind of glad we were able to see Don't Worry Darling because the next episode is Werewolf by Night, um, Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Uh, and I'm going to recommend something. So if also, we have to do. Do we have uh, anything coming out in theaters this week? I don't think so. Let's see. But like, since. Smile, bro. Uh yeah, I mean that movie Amsterdam is coming out. Yeah, but I know you said you weren't gonna see it. I'm not so. gonna see it. No, I might. Apparently, see it. got bad reviews. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, it was only the social embargo. I only saw one review, and it was just guy. Like, yeah, it wasn't good. So I don't really. I'm taking that with a grain of salt. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, uh, back to Hellraiser. Um, I think the whole thing is like. This the story is like there's this Elon Musk like type rich guy that just happens to be obsessed with like the occult and like uh, yeah. demons and stuff, and he sort of like brings in these people, tells them they're going to a rehab, and it's really to like experiment with yeah like the box and the and the cenobites yeah. and stuff. It reminded me of, the trailer had a lot of stuff that reminded me of Hellraiser two. Which you said you didn't you didn't really like it, right? Or did you? The second one? Yeah. Um I didn't I which one was the second one? I I just binged like a bunch of them. That's with um hold on. That's Sorry. the one um, with like the maze where they go into like the underworld. Oh with the, the doctor. No, nah, yeah. honestly besides the first one, I don't really like any of the other ones. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't like three. No, I thought three was like really campy, like too campy for me. Yeah, I kind of liked how campy it was because that's like the only one in the franchise like, that tries to do something like that. Yeah, I mean, like I don't like. I usually I like campy stuff, but I just felt like it was so over the top. Like, I don't yeah, know. yeah. But there was there was a lot of imagery that reminded me of Hellraiser two in the trailer. So we get all like, about the. Look- Thing. Yeah, the Leviathan thing, which is that giant, like, like, diagonal. No, what is that thing? I don't know. Yeah. What it, like a, I, I was also reading that apparently, um, like, if, like, Leviathan's, like, the last stage, and the reason why the, this guy is doing it is because, like, you get a wish for you to complete the puzzle. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. that's why he's, like, that's his motivation behind it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks good. I'm excited. And hof- yeah. hopefully it is good, because then we could get more Hellraiser that's good in, like, this universe. Yeah. Who, you know? What's his name? Um, I forgot the name of the director. Clive Barker? Or the, or the yeah. actual? Or David no, 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 Brockner? Uh, yeah, David Brockner. Because I watched um, The Ritual, which is a, a movie he did on Netflix. And I actually, like, really liked it. It's like... um. Kind of a it takes place like in like Eastern Europe in the woods and like these people go on a 
a hiking trip and like something's like stalking them and there's like it's it's really good there's a lot of good like cinematography in it especially for like an original netflix horror film mm-hmm. i thought it was pretty good so i have i'm i have pretty high hopes for hellraiser yeah so do i i yeah but like i said we'll talk about it next yeah episode. obviously we'll talk about it more next week um also there's another trailer for babylon which is one of my most anticipated for the remainder of the year it's Damien Chazelle's next film, and he did uh, La La Land and Whiplash. Is it a is it a musical or no? No, I mean it might have musical aspects, but like, it reminded me a lot of like, like I mean I, I don't really know. You probably know more about that movie than I do, but like kind of like Great Gatsby with the parties and stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like the type of vibe. It's um, well, not really. I mean, it's in Hollywood, so yeah. it's about like. The rise of like the movie star, I guess, and is it like Margo... the first, it's about like the first motion picture too? Me, I don't know. I uh, I'm not sure the plot details exactly, but just based on the trailer, I know it has to do with because Brad Pitt's character says like, "Oh, when I first came to Hollywood, they said like no actors allowed." Yeah. So it's like before, like obviously you know Hollywood known for that now. So yeah, yeah. Um. The only thing is, I f- also wait. Tobey Maguire's in it, which is cool. Yeah, is he playing Charlie Chaplin? I, people are saying that, but based on the trailer, it doesn't look like it. I don't know who he's playing, but it doesn't look like Charlie Chaplin. Um, I'm kind of getting Margot Robbie fatigue a little bit. Really? She's, she's in like so much shit. I feel like. Yeah, I mean, she's good in a lot of the stuff she's in. She, she is, but like, I'm just looking at like her slate. Of upcoming shit, she has Barbie. Barbie. This she has Amsterdam. Amsterdam. She's gonna um, she's doing like an Ocean's Eight uh, prequel or some shit. She she's just like booked, and I feel like I see her in trailers so much, and she like always plays basically the same character. She's she's doing the Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I don't know if it's a show or a movie. She's like the lead in that. Um. And then, and then James Gunn said that he's working on something with her too. Yeah, so there's just like so much shit coming out with her. I mean, listen, man, she wants she probably if she wants to run her bag up and you know, and so far none of the projects that she's been doing have been like bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, like I said, she's a great actress. I'm just kind of like I don't know why. I was like, geez, like Margot Robbie again, but yeah, I mean. I hope it's good, cause just cause Damien Giselle is such a great track record. Yeah, and it I'm seems. Assuming, I mean, I'm assuming it'll be good. It doesn't seem as good as a uh, La La Land yeah. or Whiplash, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm willing to give it a chance. Obviously, uh, what else had trailers? Oh, M Night I mean, Shyamalan's next movie. Yeah, I actually saw the trailer to that. Um... While like in the theaters, but don't worry, darling. So I I saw on Twitter that it came out and shit. I didn't get a chance to see it, and I actually like I'm really intrigued. I mean, I have no idea what the movie's about or like, but it yeah, looked I, like it was really interesting. I thought that was such a great trailer too. Yeah. Like it's rare that you really see good trailers that make you want to like watch the film. Yeah, based off knowing nothing, because it basically sets up the plot. It's like these people come to a cabin. Yeah, and then. Yes. Or people show up. And they're like, yeah, like this is the most important like decision, decision. Like, in the world. They're like, you guys have to make a choice, otherwise, like the apocalypse happens. And it's like so like what the fuck? And you're like, wait, yeah. what what? And what, it, it like intrigues you so much. Yeah. Apparently it's based off a novel and like people on Twitter were saying, at least from what they could see, it's very faithful so far. Yeah. So I'm trying. I like was tempted to look up like what happened in the novel, but I was like, nah, dude. Like, What's the name of the book? It's called. It's called like a cabin in the woods, maybe or something. Yeah. Hold on, let me see. And like, I feel like they didn't really show. Like, you can tell that like the scenes that they showed probably all take place within like a half an hour of each other. Like, they don't really show anything either, which yeah. is good. Yeah, all right. It's based on a book called Cabin at the End of the World. So, I mean, yeah, I'm like, 
tempted to look up the ending. I don't know. I don't want to know the ending. I just want to know what the book is about. Also, apparent the thing that was weird is like they were at least when they were talking about yeah, M Night Shyamalan's filming his next thing. They were saying like, oh, he's doing like a movie that looks like it was all in one take, like a Birdman type. But it didn't seem like that from the trailer at all. It says, um, I'm not looking up the ending. It's apparently it's a horror. It won, novel won the Horror Writers Association Award in 2019. Uh, let me see. The Cabin at the End of the World. I'm trying to look it up without, like, spoil on what it's actually about. Bro, it's like, what, basically... I mean, what the ending is. I mean, it's going to be about, like... The, the same thing that the trailer showed, I'm assuming. Just, like, yeah. people in a cabin, and then people pull up, and are like, you gotta make this choice. Vacation at Royal Cabin. One, two, one. But you heard what I was saying, or no? What? That they were advertising it as, like, oh, it all takes... It, it looks like it's gonna be, like, one continuous long shot. Um, I mean, it didn't look like that from the trailer. I know it didn't. So I'm. Uh, I guess they're like not doing it doing anymore. It yeah, I don't know. It's probably just like so difficult to pull that off. Yeah. And you have to kind of like design your film around that in order for it to work. Yeah. You know. Like it's such a limitation. Yeah. But yeah, I'm very intrigued because M Night Shyamalan is like one of the the most inconsistent directors. He has like gems, and then he just has shit. So. Yeah. And old was shit, so hopefully this one's a gem. I mean, he also directed the abomination of the live action Avatar Last Airbender. Yeah, but I doubt that's not really his fault. I'm pretty sure like the studio had major intervention in that. No, he had complete creative control of the movie. Really? Yeah. Like every that's why it was so bad. Like the original creators weren't even like because he said he would do it and they just basically gave him like, Alright, you could do whatever you want with the characters. Maybe well, at like the time it came out, like he was huge, and they were just like, "All right, we trust." Yeah, him that's too. that's yeah, that's exactly what happened. And like it was, I mean, it was bad. It was a bad movie in general. And then like for people that like like Avatar, it was like a tr- like one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah, have you you seen it or no? I've seen clips. I've never actually like sat down and watched it. You should watch it one day just to see. Yeah, I'm curious, like how they how all the characters. I know, like. First of all, it's supposed to take place in Asia, and like everybody's white, and then like the they say his name is Ang, and they say Ong, they call him like Ong, and then like even the bending skills, like it's it looks like horrible. The what, like but, the air bending and shit. Yeah, like all the the way, like the, the I know this thing was made like earlier, but. Like the visual effects look like really bad. I'm interested to see like how Netflix handles it. Because they they have a live action Avatar show coming out. Yeah, and I think the cast looked pretty like good, right? Or at least comic, yeah. not comic it accurate. Yeah, it was I, accurate to like what like. So each nation is like based off of, like a different part of like China, um, not China. I'm sorry, of Asia, like the Fire Nation's China, like, um, the 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 Water Nation is more like Inuit. Type like that culture, mm-hmm. uh, the like Earthbenders are more like like towards like India, and then Airbenders are kind of like like monk s like they're kind of inspired like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I don't know when that comes out. I don't even know if I'll watch it, but Probably. yeah, I mean, we're, soon we're... that that and the live action One Piece. Yeah, we're getting a little off topic. Yeah, from, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the knock at the cabin. Also. Yeah. Uh, Rupert Grint is in it, who played exactly. Ron in the Harry Potter movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did notice that actually. Yeah, I'm kind of hyped for that. He hasn't really been in much. Yeah, I know he was, he was, wasn't he originally in like they were gonna do that Marvel show? Um, what the hell is it called with like Mr. Immortal and Squirrel Girl? Oh, and he got cast in it. I forgot who was who he was playing. I don't know. But, yeah, there's, like, I don't know. He's been in a few things, but he hasn't really done anything big. There's, like, this mad funny video of this guy sees him at an airport, and he's, like, 
yeah, I wrote like this, this amazing script for this movie. It follows like this, like this action hero. He has to do all this stuff, whatever he tells him about the script. He's like, yeah, and I need like a young, like brilliant British actor who's like gorgeous to play this. And he like gives it to Rupert Grant and he's like, so can you give this to Daniel Radcliffe? And like Rupert Grant gets like tight and like run, like walks away. It's kind of <laughs> funny, but it, yeah, he's like over. He was overshadowed, I guess, by Daniel yeah. Radcliffe. Like after Harry Potter ended, because he hasn't really done. At least Radcliffe is like reimagining himself. Yeah, Emma Watson is like doing a ton of shit on her own. And yeah, I'm glad to see. Yeah, him he hasn't really been in much. I feel like there's a few random things. I just looked at it, but. Yeah, no, I'm glad to see him get him work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there hasn't really been much movie news this week. The only other thing we could talk about, I guess, is She-Hulk episodes five and six. I, I which... still even haven't, I haven't finished six yet, but I, I'm in the middle of it. It's just, it's like, I mean... It's like self-contained, right? It's like... Yeah, they're basically like filler episodes. It progresses yeah. the story a little bit. Five is like... She has to get fitted for like costumes or something Mm -hmm. and what what is like the legal thing going on in that i forget it's like titania stole her name right yeah but i mean she won yeah yeah she hulk ends up winning in episode five she wins the case but then at the end it's revealed that the person who was making she hulk's costume also had like daredevil's helmet yeah so they tease Daredevil at the end of episode five. And then episode six starts. And right at the beginning, like uh She Hulk looks at the cameras like, Yeah, this is like an inconveniently placed wedding episode. Like, cause weddings are inconvenient yeah. or something. So it's kinda like a big like a fuck you to the fans that were waiting for Daredevil yeah. to show up. I don't know. I don't know if you saw, but there was like um they like made fun of like you know like the people that just like shit on She Hulk because like it's like a it's like a female thing and like yeah you know what I'm talking about? like you know how they have those like retarded thumbnails yeah they like made fun of that in the show like it was like they were showing like that and then like one of the pages like said something to to the effect that like all oh, the memes are stupid and like they're literally making fun of people like him mm-hmm. <laughs> I know I think I did see that on Twitter yeah. It's like the showrunners know what people are going to use on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then episode... Yeah, episode six, like, it's just a wedding episode. Nothing really crazy happens. Yeah. Um, but apparently Daredevil's not pulling up till episode eight. I heard that. I so, heard that. And apparently there's only one episode, too. Yeah. I feel like the show started off really good. And then, like, the now first couple started, episodes, yeah. it had, like, Hulk was there wong pulled up yeah, and like they were actually doing like fun and interesting stuff and now it's just kind of like random yeah which i mean it is she hulk's show yeah so i get it but it's not bad it's not bad it's just like it's it started off so much better and now it's just kind of like yeah. yeah um so yeah i mean that's really it for yeah, movie it's, news it was pretty slow for movie news this this week yeah so i guess we can get into Coraline, Coraline, which you recommended last week. So yeah. I'm gonna give a little synopsis here. Yeah, so Coraline is about this girl, obviously named Coraline, and her and her parents move into this new like house. And her parents are like very busy with work, so they don't really like pay attention to her. And she's like wandering in the house and finds like this like like portal kind not portal. What would you call it? She finds a door that Brings her to yeah, another a, world. Another world where, like, it's her same family. And they're, like, all, like, loving. And, like, they all, like, pay a lot of attention to her. But they all have buttons for eyes. And, like, she comes, like, as the movie goes on, you realize, like, they're not as, like, you know, nice as they seem. Like, there's more to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, And it's it's a claymation film. Claymation, yeah. It's directed by uh, Henry Selleck, who also did... Nightmare, Nightmare, no, Nightmare on Before Christmas. Yeah. Um, and the first thing I noticed was like how crisp the animation is. It looks really good. Yeah, it's it's really visually stunning. Like all like the the whole world that they're in, is like like the colors and the sounds. Like it, it was like really really good. Yeah, the whole vibe and atmosphere of it is just 
Like it's something that it's hard to almost like an Alice in Wonderland esque. Yeah, and it's of... it's kind of hard to imitate it in live action, which I is agree. why like this medium of claymation or animation in general should be used more for like adult stories. But right. it's animation it's not... in general. Yeah, I actually, I wrote in my letterbox review about how like there's so many people that will not watch this film just for the pure fact that it's animated. And, like, they'll just associate that with, like, a kid's movie. But, like, animation is, like, it has it's such a powerful way of storytelling. And even, like, some of the, I mean, I love anime, but, like, there's so much shit that is good quality media that people just won't watch just because it's animated. And Coraline being, like, a prime example of that. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a sorry. second. Uh... Originally, it was going to be a live-action movie. Oh, I didn't know which that. Which I didn't know. And they had cast um, Dakota Fanning to play her. And like she was just going to be the live-action version. But then when they decided to do Claymation, they went to Dakota Fanning and were like, yeah, we're actually doing Claymation, but like you could do the voice if you want. And she was like, sure. So she ended up still staying on to do the voice. But I, I can't imagine how this would have been in live-action. Honestly, I mean, definitely probably not at the time, but I feel like now it's you could pull it off. I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but I mean, it's only a matter of time. You know how Hollywood loves to reuse their beloved IPs. I'd rather them honestly do another story in the Coraline universe, whether it's about like um, the grandma, like you know, she lost her sister. Yeah, I mean, it is. We'll get into it like later when we talk about the ending and stuff, but it is kind of weird how like she's tar Coraline specifically targeted. And I kind of thought that it was like an us situation where everyone had like a button version of themselves in the other world. Yeah. But like it's revealed that that's not really what it is. But yeah, yeah. I have a little bit of like gripes with the, the ending and like how they handle everything but we could talk about it later yeah i also wanted to mention the music the soundtrack's really good yeah there's like that one like theme that's nostalgic you know what i'm talking oh, about the the i don't want to sing it but i think you know what I'm oh talking it's about. on tiktok right i don't know it might be on tiktok i don't really know it's the one with the dad singing no 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 hold on i always see that on tiktok like the it's like it's like um when he goes on the piano, but like the piano's playing for him. Nah, I'm talking about this. I'll play it really quick. Hopefully, we don't get copyright. But for the fans to hear, yeah. This one. City. I, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. That that like remind that brought me back. You know, yeah. for some reason, when I watched the film originally, like. Was also was that like blaring in the mic or nah? No, no. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. But um, yeah, like that music for some reason stuck with me until now. Like I, it's like iconic. I feel like, but I guess yeah. not because you didn't really remember it. No, um, I said it, but like I, n- that song stuck out to me while watching the movie. Now, like I was like, I was like, this is like such like calming music. Yeah, and it's sort of like dreamlike, and yeah, they do like put the question out there of is any of this real is it just like is the whole movie just an only child like making stuff up in order to like cope with being lonely you know those ideas are explored a bit and i'm not like entirely convinced that any of it's real and i'll go into like a couple reasons why later Mm -hmm. but yeah in terms of other technical stuff besides the music um a lot of the transitions were pretty cool like there was uh, there's ones where she would like fall into bed and it would like instantly cut to her being like like sitting at the table but it wasn't like a cut it was like a fade which is kind of hard to do in like stop motion yeah there was there was like a couple things like that like her falling out of her chair and it went instantly to her being in her bed all that stuff is cool just like at least making some sort of unique transition instead of just cuts you know yeah yeah um but yeah, I guess I don't really know in terms like the production value and production design was cool. 
Yeah. Like all this, all the. Uh, I like the character designs. Yeah. Especially of the mom at the end, the other mom at the end. Mm-hmm. And how, like, as it goes on, like, you get to see, like, more and more what she actually looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's, like, the guy, the kid Wyborn or whatever. Yeah. He calls her Jonesy, which was <laughs> fire. I didn't even realize that. Because her name is Coraline Jones. Yeah. And like a letter, he says Jonesy. Yeah. So it's like a reference to Fortnite. Fortnite, you know? Yeah. Damn, I didn't um, even realize that. Yeah, so basically like Wyborn is coming to Fort. Hopefully. It's canning now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, his character wasn't in the book originally. I, wait, I didn't even know it was based on the book. Yeah, dude. And you're gonna... This one might blow your mind, but it's based... The book is written by Neil Gaiman. Really? Yeah. What did it like? Sandman. Yeah. yeah. I didn't um, know that. Yeah, so he wrote the book. Wyborn originally is not in it. Um, in the book, What's, it's more is, like is the book called Coraline? Or, oh yeah. Yeah, it's more of her like talking to herself the whole book, but they wanted her to have like someone her age in the movie. Yeah. Just so she's not like talking to herself the whole film, because stuff like that doesn't translate well into film. It like works yeah. in a book, but damn, uh, I didn't know. Is he like a producer on it? I'm sure he has writing credit, but I'm not too. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, yeah, he's a writer. But yeah, also like the contrast between the real world and like the other world is pretty cool in yeah. terms of, like the colors. In the real world, everything is sort of like bleak. Dark tones of oh, like yellow yeah. and green. Oh, draining. And then the other world is bright, energetic. There's all these like vibrant colors. Um, and you like it's you could tell it's too good to be true. Yeah. You know? And it is, I guess it is kind of similar to uh Don't Worry Darling in that way. Where like this other world seems perfect, but it's not. Yeah. Um Yeah, but hold on. So in terms of, like, what I wanted to talk about is, do you think, like, all that stuff has actually happened or no? Yeah. I kind of think it might have all been a dream. But. I, I, I don't I like, for I don't know. I just feel like that takes the fun away from the movie. Like, no, nah, you're right. But, like, every time she goes to bed in the dream world, she wakes up in, like, her real bed. Yeah. You know? But also, like, stuff that happened to her in the dream world. Happens to her in real life. Yeah. Like her there, rash. There are, there are a few things. The rash. The one thing that stood out for me is like that makes me think, all right, maybe it is actually all happening was one. Um, the cat, two. The, gr- the groceries rotting on the table. Yeah. So like oh, yeah, her parents she's actually gone in there, yeah. must have not been there. And also like the circus guy on the. Who, yeah, like, the ma- he says the, mi- the mice said, uh, like, they, he says that the mice tell her like specific, tell him like specific details of like shit that happened. So, yeah. But if that is all real, like, why is Coraline being targeted specifically? What do you mean? Like, why is that mother targeting Coraline? Because she's like a kid in the home. Is it just like that home that? I mean, I guess. Yeah, I think it's just the home. Like whoever lives there. Yeah, that's why like she doesn't she never lets uh what's his name go in the home. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Um I see. But yeah, I like how throughout like the other world it sort of gets like darker and darker each time she visits. Like the mother starts getting like passive aggressive a little yeah. bit. Like she, there was one scene where she refers to like the button eyed dad, she's like, Oh, you're better dad. Yeah. Or you're your, your better father. It's like your little passive dad, ag- yeah. aggressive stuff. Um, and yeah, that kind of like tr- brings me into my favorite scene, which was when Coraline goes into that world, like while the other mother isn't there. And like the dad, his face is all kind of like, like deformed. Up, yeah. And because like they, all those people are just like, figments that the other mother created they're not like actual people so like when she's like sleeping or not there they don't have like energy to do anything 
and I felt like the visuals in that scene were really cool, and it yeah. felt like super like dark. Honestly, there there are yeah. a lot of like dark elements. Oh yeah, there's a lot of adult themes in the movie. Um, one of them also, which was kind of dark, was like when the other mother says like, "Oh, this is your friend, like Wyborn, but I know you don't like when he talks, so like I made him better for you." Yeah, and she like sews his mouth shut. Mouth shut, yeah. Which is like pretty disturbing for like a kids movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but that whole world in general, uh. Like I liked the attention to detail in it. It was very creative, yeah, very stylized. Like you can tell they cared a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like even even the scene where um those two ladies are like doing their performance and all the dogs are in the crowd. Yeah. They made all of their eyes buttons, like each dog. Yeah, yeah. Which was like, you know, they didn't have to do it. Do that. But yeah. the fact that they went out of their way to like do that. Even like the bu- the bugs in the, the, the world have a bug eye. Like the, the the eyes yeah um yeah there's some other creepy shit though that happens like when the circus dude is like made out of rats yeah the, yeah that was creepy but i don't really remember being creeped out by this as a kid no i don't remember being creeped out either um i definitely appreciate it more now than i did as a kid Like, I feel like, like, when I was a kid, like, I wasn't really into, like, this style of, like, I don't know, not style, but, like, this genre of, like, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like, you know how this movie has, like, a type of, like, it's not horror, but it's kind of, like, horror-esque, like, yeah. like, I would, I didn't really, like, watch it for that when I was younger, but now, I picked this because I like that type of stuff now. So like now yeah. I I liked it way better. Not that I didn't it like was, it first one. It was cool to revisit it. Definitely. Yeah. Because especially sometimes you watch stuff as a kid, and when you come back and like see it as an adult, you have like a completely different lens. Yeah. On it, and you could appreciate it more for certain things that it did. Where like if you're a kid, you don't you don't know or give a fuck about the animators that like painstakingly moved every piece of clay for each shot of the movie. Yeah. You know. But now that we realize, like, that's how much effort went into take it, you sort of, to uh, to make it, you sort of, like, appreciate the film yeah. that much more. And looking into it, it, it took uh, a year and a half to shoot after two years of pre-production. Two so, years of pre-production? Jesus. So, so three and a half years to make, which is, like, pretty unreal. It's insane. Just, I didn't realize, yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah, so I do. I like stop motion. I, it is one of the better stop motion films I've seen. Um, uh, in my opinion, I think it's the best stop motion film I've ever seen. You have to check out Wes Anderson's stop motion. Isle of Dog and Isle of Dogs and Fantastic Mr. Fox. Isle of Dogs better than this? is a little bit better, I think. And I also think Nightmare Before Christmas is a little better. No, I like this way better. That's another one that I have to revisit. Um, yeah. Did you yeah, I didn't. I was. Movie? I was looking at. Um, yeah, my. Actually, I gotta think. I mean, the garden scene stuck out to me a lot. Which Just one? the visuals, like when she goes to the the other world and like she goes in the garden and like all the plants start like blooming and like there's all these different colors and creatures around. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. What were you gonna say though? I think I, I just cut you off. Um, I forgot. Honestly, what was I saying? What were we talking about? Stop motion. I was talking about uh, Isle of Dogs and Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, oh. Um, the guy who will do, obviously, what's his name, the director of this? Uh, who, Henry Selleck. He's doing um, Wendell and Wild, which is like another claymation movie with uh, Jordan Peele producing, and he's also like starring in it, too. That's cool. It comes out on Netflix in October. It's like something about like these two demons and a girl. It looks cool. Same type of style. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely check it out. I, I'm kind of intrigued now to like go back and watch Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, I'll and... definitely watch it. But, like some, I mean, because Halloween's coming up. Yeah. And also, I don't know if it's him, but Corpse Bride. Remember that movie? Oh, that? I don't think that's him, but that's another good one. 
Frank and Weenie, I even liked. Yeah. There's like a ton of good ones. I yeah, but like that whole vibe of it being like not horror, but it's like dark and yeah. like still for kids. You know? Corpse Ride is another one that's like that. That oh that was actually directed by Tim Burton. I just checked. Which is cool. I wanna if they ever did that in live action, they gotta get Timothy Chalamet in there. But Wait, that's yeah. another one. I'm surprised they haven't done that in live action. Bro, all the, the thing is like this shit is inevitable. Like ever, like eventually your favorite cartoon is gonna be made into live action. Yeah. It's gonna uh, that's doable it's though, Corpse Bride. That's not like yeah, that. It's doable. Hopefully I mean if you had Tim Burton back, it could yeah, actually like, work. Yeah. But yeah, back to Coraline. Um, it was weird because I kind of like related it to Pearl in a weird way. Because yeah. there, there's like, well, I also, I low-key try to like relate the movies we watch in some way. Just to mm-hmm. like tie things together. Yeah. But in Pearl, there's a lot of, like her, her mother says to her, like life isn't about what you want. It's about making the most of what you have. Yeah. And that's kind of like something you see in Coraline. Like she's yeah, unhappy with her parents. She wants like this dream world where like she has loving parents and like unlimited yeah. food and money and all this. But like that's not life, you know. There yeah. is no dream world you can escape to where everything's perfect. You have to make the best out of your situation, situation. Yeah, you know. And Good also, you, yeah, I that was just like a random thing. But also, like I kind of was like not liking Coraline a little bit through it now that we're like adults. Not well, I mean, technically we're adults, but we're still young. But um Yeah. Like the parents, you you kind of feel for them because like they obviously like, Yeah, they, yeah. They like, have like no like, money. Yeah, it's not like and, a lack of like this they don't like Coraline. It's just like they have to be focused on work and they can't really like entertain her. Yeah. And it kind of like watching that I was like, damn, like if I have kids one day like i cannot have an only child <laughs> i gotta have two mm-hmm. at least keep each other busy but um yeah like i was feeling for the parents because Coraline was kind of like being a bitch to her mom and her mom's well, she's like, like a, you know she's a, she's a like yeah, a, she's a, a kid so it's like expected yeah but her mom was like listen like we have to like get through this gardening thing to like make money and then like i'll make it up to you and then she does at the end she buys her the gloves that yeah. she wanted which was cute and, like, they have this whole, like, barbecue. But, yeah, I was starting to, like, not like Coraline through it, which it is kind of, like I said, about having, like, a different lens as an adult. Like, as a kid, you obviously are going to side with Coraline. But then seeing it, like, when you're older. No, but, you're... I mean, I feel for Coraline, too. Like, I mean, like, well, I don't know. I feel like, like, obviously, they're busy with work, but, like, they could be nicer. Like, she, they, her mom is still kind of a dick to her. Yeah. I mean, she's like yearning for attention. Like, attention. I mean, and then like, yeah. and then Wyborn pulls up, who could be a friend of hers, and then she calls him, "Why were you born?" Like that's actually so foul. Like actually, I didn't even realize that. Like she literally says multiple times, "Like why were you born?" Like he's literally just like that's a friend right there. Yeah. You get some attention from him, but yeah, I mean that uh, like I don't know. I was like a little nitpick. Nitpick. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. But yeah, uh, my favorite character was not Coraline. It was actually Keith David as the cat. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, I really did like the cat. And Keith David is, he's a pretty well known actor. He, uh, yeah, he is played. He, um, did he play he, Candyman or no? No, no, that's that's um, Tony Todd, but he played um, Daniel Kaluuya's dad in Nope. Oh yeah, he did. And wasn't he in? Um, he was in something else big too. Yeah, I can't I gotta check. Uh, I'm about to check really quick. Uh, oh, he's in the thing. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, he's in a couple. Of, he's in Requiem for a Dream. I don't really remember that, but I remember him in that. But he has kind of like a, like his voice is very like, I don't know if soothing is the word, but it's unique. Yeah. And it worked well as the cat. Yeah, the cat. And then yeah. there's like that one part at the end where she doesn't think she's going to get like the last eye. Yeah. Of the kid, and then the, the cat 
he like kills that mouse yeah. and then gets the eye back, which was like a, a nice moment. Um, yeah. So, did you have a favorite character? I mean, Cor- yeah, probably Coraline, or even like the yeah, probably cool. I mean, the mom is cool. The other mom. But that's more like I like the character design than the actual character. Yeah, she was very like bug like. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure what? her 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 hands are made of like sewing needles. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. Those. And yeah, you don't notice it, but in the first scene of the movie, she's the one who's like sewing up the Coraline doll. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess. Go to ratings. You can go to ratings. I gave us four stars, eight out of yeah. ten. I give it four and a half. So we both, you know, we both thought it was. Yeah, I thought it. I thought it was really good. I just kind of like had super high hopes for it because people say like it's the best claymation, best stop motion animation ever made. And I mean, I, just, I still, get it. still think it is, but I mean, yeah, yeah, like like I said, it's still really good. I just had like a couple issues with yeah. the story, and I don't know. I feel like I remembered it being better you as could. a kid, but still really good. Um, and also the door is left open for a sequel because they like the mother's hand gets like thrown down the well, but you know, they could always be like, Oh, it's, it's like so alive or something. Well, but Neil Gaiman actually said like, he's not doing a sequel unless they I, could. I broke up for a second. Just... I'm going to unplug. It broke up for like a little bit because Nami jumped on my laptop. Oh, did you hear anything of what I said or no? Uh, oh no, I just said I I gave it. Oh wait, no, you heard me give it an eight out of ten, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just said like I remembered it better as a kid and like I had gripes with the story. Yeah. Um, but I said like the door is left open for a sequel if they want to. Oh um, yeah, I yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely like if they want to, there's more stories to tell in this world. Yeah, like. The thing is, the mother's the other mother's hand gets like thrown down the well, but they could just be like, "Oh, it, like it's yeah, still she alive or something." Or... But Neil Gaiman said he's not; they're not planning on doing a sequel anytime soon because really? he said unless they could think of a story that's as good or better than the original, there's no point. And he yeah, that, and I like I like that because like there's no need to force another story. Like if if like all it's meant to be is one movie, then let it be. Like don't force more stories down if they're not going to be good. Yeah, and I remember when Henry Selick like said he was doing a movie in 2022. There was like a bunch of rumors that it was going to be Coraline too, until it was eventually revealed to be like Wendell and Wild or yeah. whatever it's called. Um, I'm actually like I didn't realize it's it's uh, Key and Peele. They're 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 playing the main two like demons in the movie. Yeah, and then uh, obviously uh, Peele being a producer is you know that's yeah, always good. Yeah. The trailer looked a little like darker than like most of his movies. Yeah, I didn't watch it, so I I might have to run that trailer. Yeah. Let's see. But yeah, I mean, I guess that wraps up yeah. Coraline. So yeah, thanks for recommending that. That was a good one. Ooh, yeah, that was probably one of my better ones. Yeah. Um, I gave everything Ooh. a four star today. <laughs> but. So what uh, did you you got to recommend your movie now? Well, no, we got to go through our questions first. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Fair. So. Q and A time. Let's see. Oh, this one's from a friend of the podcast, Joe Imperato. Joe, thanks for your question. Let's see. What movie are you guys most excited for in the upcoming October to December releases? I know Joe, mine already. You want to go That's first? Bad. Yeah, The Whale. It's coming. I think December 9th. Darren Aronofsky. Was this his let his first film since Mother? Um. I want to say yes, but I'm not sure. And I mean, everything I've heard about it has been like phenomenal. Brendan Fraser apparently like best performance of his career. So I'm really yeah. excited for that. Let me check if it's. Um... Can you, can you hear Nami right now? Or no. No. Why? What is she doing? She's like purring so loud. No, she's like sitting on the table. Well. All right. Wait. Nah, I'm just checking really quick. Uh. What's it called? Yeah, it is his first film since Mother. Joe? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but for me, Hellraiser is one of them, for sure. 
Oh that's yeah, kinda, I forgot about that too. Yeah, that's like so soon that I'm not really like looking yeah. ahead to it. Yeah, Babylon. Like I said, that looks amazing. Yeah. Um, Black whale, Panther two. Like you said, yeah, Black Panther two. But if I, mean, I I'm to, a, I'm excited for Black Adam, but I don't know about you. I mean, yeah. if I had to pick one, I would probably say Babylon. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's another said, really good one. Yeah. You said the whale. The whale, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks again, Joe, for your question. For your question, yeah. Let's see. Um. Here's one from, from Nick Scamato. My roommate. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Best movie in existence? Question mark. Um, I mean, I feel like it's going to vary for, like, everyone's going to have a different answer for that. Yes, probably is up there. Would you say? Uh, Morbius, probably. Yeah. Um, the wheel is another good one. What is that? Oh, the you know, wheel. So the wheel. Yeah. Ginger Dead Man is up there as the best movie ever. Made. Leprechaun, what is it? Leprechaun Two in the hood, in the hood, da. Yeah, the... yeah, that's up there. Now, but on a serious note, um, I'm just I don't know what exactly you meant by this question, but I'm gonna take it as you meaning what is like the best movie, not necessarily your favorite. So, when yeah. people ask me like, what's the best movie ever made? One that really comes to mind is. Shawshank Redemption. It's not my favorite film, but and I've I've watched it recently for the first time, but I, I can understand why people say it is the best movie ever made, and it's definitely up there. Still I still haven't seen it. Um, yeah, it's that's like the one that that comes to mind, and it's funny because Nick actually is the one who like showed Recommend it to me. It, yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know if like, I mean, obviously there's like Citizen Kane people say, but yeah. it's hard to be the best movie ever made when you had like the limitations of being made back then, yeah. you know, but yeah, anything come to mind for you right now? I mean, like recently, Everything Everywhere is one of the movies. I mean, it's, it's definitely up there. One of the best movies I've ever seen. I don't know if that's like a little, little more recency bias, but what would you think? Yeah. I mean, I think it is a bit of recency bias for sure, but yeah, it's very good. I wouldn't say it's like the best movie ever made. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for the question, Nick. That's yeah. it's an interesting discussion to be had. Um, next question from, again, from CPA Mom of Three. Thanks, Mom, Just for saying. for the question. Uh do you think branding in movies is gratuitous or adds something to the movie itself? That's a good question. I feel like question. I don't really notice branding that much unless it's like super, super like in your face. I think there is a good way to do product placement in a film. And I understand why product placement is necessary because yeah. a lot of times like directors need money like to make a film and get their idea out there so they're like all right like let's put cocaine in it for like a second yeah. or something but when it's like completely in your face like one that always comes to mind when i think of this is um the amazing spider-man movies literally everything is a sony product yeah and it's like so insane they have sony billboards sony laptops sony computers yeah. like every uh, everything is actually sony. yeah i know i was uh... I agree with you with that. Like, I and really don't notice it that much, but that's one of the few movies where, like, I did notice it. And the thing about that is that it's not like, it's not like they need the money because yeah, Sony like themselves a, is making it. They're just pushing their own product. There are also times where, like, a product, like, applies like directly to the story, or like is like important. Like, for example, like Eggo waffles and Stranger Things. Like they're yeah. not just there. Like they actually like mention it a bunch of times. Like it's our favorite food. Yeah. So like it's a like there's a reason for it to be there. They're not just like oh look at these egos. Like you know. Yeah, I agree. Another one is like the Barbasol can in Jurassic Park. Jurassic World. Oh, Jurassic Park. Yeah. That's like a part of the story. So like it feels like organic that it's there. You yeah. Know? 
Um, there are also directors like, for example, Tarantino. He doesn't use anyone's products. He made up his own brands. Like his cigarette brand is called Red Apple Cigarettes because he didn't want to use any like real brand. Brands. So in, wait, so in all his movies, they use Red Apple Cigarettes? Yeah. It's actually sick. And also like Big Kahuna Burger from Pulp Fiction. That's like the burger restaurant from his world. They don't use McDonald's or Burger yeah. King. Like he made up his own, which is cool. Like that's something that that like it's also like a stamp on his like movies, you know? Yeah. But that's a way to have like those products without doing the product placement. Yeah, I uh, I didn't even I never knew that. That's actually really cool that he has all his own like brands. Yeah. But like I said, like if you're an up and coming director and like you need the funding, oh yeah, I, yeah. I don't have any issues with it. Yeah, I but, agree. Yeah, so that that's a good question. And that was like a good discussion, yeah. I guess. So yeah, but you basically like same sentiment with me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. So yeah, thanks for the question. Um, last question, Pete. Again, thank you. Um, you. What's your opinion on people getting hired more for their name and not acting skills? Um, I feel like, I mean, they earn that, right? I mean, I feel like this doesn't happen too much. Yeah. Like, the, one, the big one I could think of is The Rock. Like, no one hires The Rock for his acting ability. They hire no, him it's for his brand and what he brings, like, his yeah, fan base. They know he's going to sell tickets. Yeah. You know? But at the same time, like, it, I feel like it rarely happens. Like, I guess you could say Harry Styles is one because yeah, like, a, a big guess. part of why he was hired is because of um, like how well known he is and people, and yeah, like they know yeah. he's going to sell tickets, not necessarily like based on his performance, but that's different because like, first of all, Shia LaBeouf was cast first. Second of all, like he had to audition, you know, like you think yeah, the it rock, wasn't like they just yeah. You think the rock auditions for his roles? Like <laughs> no. some of them he might, but like do you honestly think he like had any I don't think he auditioned for Black, Black Adam. Adam. No. But yeah, I'm trying to think if anyone is hired for their names. The only other thing I could think of is like nepotism in uh in films, which we see a lot. Like for yeah. example, Denzel Washington's son. Um John David Washington. He's just like, he's like an industry plant. Just came out of nowhere. He is good. Yeah. But like, I was going to say, he's good. He's not like, it's not like he's a just, bad actor. No, he's not. But like instantly was put in like these huge high budget like pictures yeah. without like having to work his way up. Um. Also, Nick Cage is related to Francis Ford Coppola. I don't know if you knew that. I but he, ch- that. he changed his name. Really? In order yeah. to like not... Which is kind of cool because like he didn't want people to hire him just for his name. Yeah, and it's kind of a weird story. He changed his name to Nick Cage based on Luke Cage from Marvel. Really? Yeah, which is kind of like funny. Sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of people getting hired, I wouldn't say it's for their fame. Really, the only time it's an issue is if it's like you're related to to someone else in Hollywood, and that's why you got the job. Yeah, you know. But yeah, um, I don't know if you had any thoughts on that. No, you pretty much summed it up pretty well. Yeah, sorry. I feel like I'm taking lead on all these questions. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's it for for, yeah, for episode yeah. seven. I'll get to my movie rec. So yeah, this is I'm one curious that what you're gonna recommend. This is one that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. I'm finally gonna recommend it. It is film released in 2016 starring Mm -hmm. Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner directed by Uh Denis Villeneuve and it is Arrival it's a sci-fi film yeah you've been talking about this film for but yeah especially because I because I liked um I really like Nope and you said like if I like Nope I'm gonna really like this like the whole alien aspect well the reason why like when I watch Nope I had watched like a little bit of Arrival because mom was watching Arrival like that day. So I like Mm -hmm. watched a little bit of it with her. And then when I went down to like watch Nova, I was like, bro, like this is not even close to like Arrival in terms of the alien stuff. 
but yeah, Amy Adams, one of my favorite actresses. Jeremy Renner is one of my favorite actors and it's my favorite director. So this is, it's probably like my second favorite movie of all time, but on a rewatch could take that number one spot. So I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, Mid nineties. It's my favorite, but yeah. No, like I said, I'm excited. I'm like really excited. Yeah, I'm actually really excited because I've never, you've told me so much about this movie and I just never had the chance to watch it. Yeah, we have it on Blu-ray too, so you shouldn't have a problem finding it. Um, So yeah, all right. Thanks for listening, guys. Next episode, Arrival, Hellraiser. Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night. Thanks for listening, guys. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Letterboxd. Letterboxd, yeah. Follow us on everything. And... Goodbye. Thanks oh, for also, listening. Also, uh, me, oh, yeah, me and Matt will be going to Comic-Con. Oh, next, yeah. I forgot about that. that yeah. yeah, we're also going to be doing cosplay. Yeah. So if you guys want to see us dressed yeah, up as Morbius and Freddy Fazbear. Freddy Fazbear, pull up to Comic-Con or we'll, we'll post some we'll post some pictures yeah, after yeah. probably. So you see they're going to debut the Super Mario trailer there. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be something to talk that'll about. Be something to talk about too, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Thanks guys yeah. again. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Peace.